Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of What If RuneScape. The series where we take an idea and stretch it out as far as it can possibly go. Today we're going to be talking about leprechauns. You know them, you love them, we have them everywhere around the game. They're next to every single farming patch. And in Leagues 4 they even had a handy little thing called the leprechaun charm allowing you to teleport between leprechauns at farming patches and today we're going to see if there's a way that we can earn that and make a pretty cool lore reason why it exists so leprechauns can teleport between farming patches it'd be really cool if it was even the same leprechaun he's just at every single patch that you happen to show up to and he's able to do that by using the leprechaun charm a teleport system that uses a rainbow kind of like the bifrost to teleport between places but today is a little bit different on your farm run you see this leprechaun distressed and distraught in the Hosidius farming patch and he tells you all about how his leprechaun charm is no longer gonna work anymore and he needs your help to fix his teleportation system once the player accepts the quest they're teleported to the leprechaun dimension just like fairy rings but the counterpart the leprechauns have themselves a dimension as well the emerald glade looking over the emerald glade you'll see a quaint little town of leprechauns they have a mining pit straight in the front, and it looks like a very deep forest stretching back. Those are called the Gold Fields and the Enchanted Forest. Stepping off the platform of the Rainbow Bridge, you're greeted by the Master Engineer, who tells you he doesn't exactly trust some stranger to start tinkering with the Leprechaun's pride and joy and only transportation system. So you're going to go ahead and have to prove yourself around the Leprechaun Village. A little bit like favor, but I'd like this to be a little bit different. You now have a new skill. This skill is only going to be present during the quest, but it's the luck skill. You have to raise your luck skill from 1 to 99 by winning various games of chance all around the village. Once you finally prove your luck, you're able to start repairing the bridge. And this is when you are introduced to the new minigame, the Rainbow Restoration. During this minigame, you're going to earn construction experience while changing out different crystals that send off the seven different color spectrums. You have to keep the Bifrost running so that way the teleport system works. If you put the wrong crystal in, your luck meter will go down. Your luck meter needs to stay above a certain threshold, and if it falls before a certain threshold before the time runs out, then you lose. But once you fix the bridge for the first time, you are able to access the mini game forever, as well as full access to the Leprechaun Village, which includes the Gold Fields and Enchanted Forest. Not to mention, you're rewarded with your very own Leprechaun Charm. You're now able to teleport between farming patches, and farming runs just got so much easier. Being a construction minigame, you're going to get construction points just like you do with Mahogany Homes. You can use these points to buy the construction outfit, a construction supply box, or even a special item that combines Amy's saw and the crystal saw to really be able to get a extra boost to your construction and hold it in one hand. But not only that, you can earn the Gloves of Harvesting from the Rainbow Restoration minigame. These gloves will grant you an extra 10% boost while harvesting rainbow seeds. And rainbow seeds are going to be a massive draw to the Leprechaun Village. What are rainbow seeds, you ask? <laughs> Nobody asked. Rainbow seeds can be planted in any herb, flower, allotment, bush, or hop patch. Upon planting... The seeds have a random chance of growing into any crop suited for that patch. The potential crop scales with the player's farming level, and rainbow seeds offer a consistent experience gain between herb, flower, allotment, bush, and hop patches, making them highly sought after for lower to mid-level players. The experience gained from planting and harvesting these seeds might not match the highest levels of conventional farming seeds, but they're going to be great experience for the mid-game. You can totally buy these seeds from the mini-game as well, or you'll be able to earn these seeds by completing various leprechaun tasks around the village. A little bit like wise old man tasks, or just similar games of chance that you had to deal with during the quest. 
I think a cool addition to the stores around the Leprechaun Village would be a general shop that buys things at high alchemy price. One that's not just in the wilderness because the Leprechauns are known for their deals and their good use of gold. I'd also like there to be a clothing shop that sells different kinds of leprechaun related clothing. Finishing out the outfit that the clues already provide a hat for would be amazing. And there's even somebody selling pickaxes next to the gold fields. So the gold fields are really cool. You're going to be mining fool's gold veins. Fool's gold is specifically for selling back to the leprechauns. This could be tradable on the Grand Exchange, but mainly it's supposed to be marketed as a good way for Iron Man to make money and have good experience rates while mining, with experience rates similar to shooting stars. And while you're mining in the gold fields, there could be a particular event called a gold rush, where the fields are able to produce two, three, five times the amount of fool's gold while you're mining. And another thing could happen every so often, you'll be able to find a lucky nugget a rainbow golden nugget. It looks like a golden nugget, but it's rainbow. You'll be able to turn in these lucky nuggets for lucky seeds or just sell them off to the Grand Exchange or the leprechauns themselves. But that brings us to the Enchanted Forest. The Enchanted Forest is all around the Emerald Glade, but there is a very specific space meant for wood cutting. You're gonna see around 10 to 20 trees that look like they have a different base than a normal tree. On this base, a magic, yell, or maple tree can spawn, and everyone's going to be chopping these trees kind of communally, kind of like forestry already makes it. But these trees also have the unlucky chance to spawn a tree ant or dryad. These tree ants or dryads will spawn and fight the people who are chopping trees, and they're going to only have area of effect attacks, so that way it's everybody's problem, it's not just one person's problem. But the thing is, you're also going to be getting these things called lucky leaves. You're really going to want a tree ant or a dryad to spawn so you can cut them down and gain things like lucky leaves. can be used as the highest tier to make forestry rations regardless of whatever food you use to make it. That, or you could just turn them in for lucky seeds, sell them at the Grand Exchange, or to the leprechauns as well. These trees would likely spawn at an accelerated rate to keep the activity active, kind of like forestry. This is just the harder part of forestry. You can actually expect to participate in combat should you participate in this type of dangerous forestry in the Enchanted Woods. But the Enchanted Woods is a large place, it's not just the woodcutting area, for which I'm certain the leprechauns look over all the time and laugh at the idiots trapping the trees who keep getting attacked by the tree ants and dryads. But you might be able to find a bunch of different monsters within the woods, like mischievous pixies that you'd be able to battle and then catch in an impling jar. It could kind of be like beating up a corrupted impling and then turning it into a normal impling and just granting yourself the loot. Something like gold hoarding goblins would be really cool. Expand a little bit on the goblin storylines that we already have, but they could be incredibly greedy. This civilization could only work with you if you have gold to trade. And if you don't have any gold that you're wearing on your body, they might attack you. Kinda like Minecraft. And last but not least, the tree ants and dryads should be all over this area as well. And all of these new monsters might as well be on a slayer task if we've got the chance. And I don't want the enchanted woods to be a walk in the park. I want this to be a dangerous environment. So there could be several different environmental hazards that you have to worry about. Like falling branches or spore clouds from certain trees that deal a little bit of poison damage. There's a bunch of different things like that that could actually happen. It doesn't have to be specifically those. But I would love to have some kind of dangerous environment like that for the Leprechaun Village. So what do you guys think? Do you think the gold fields would be a good way for Iron Man to earn money and mining experience? Do you think the Leprechaun Charm is a good introduction for our farm run? Along with adding our farm runs, should Lucky Seeds be introduced into the game? A seed where you're able to plant it in any farming patch for a moderate amount of experience during the mid-game. And last but not least, should we have the dangerous aspect of forestry reintroduced, but only to a specific area? And you're in that specific area, you know what you're signing up for. With a new quest, a few new monsters, and a dimension to rivals in Eris, what do you guys think? Leave it down in the comments. Does any of this fit in OSRS? And if you know what the next topic of What If RuneScape is going to be, leave it down below.